The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Come, Lord Jesus, into our boat. Calm us with your presence and give us your peace. Amen. Now, I admit, I like a real rah-rah sermon sometimes. I like to hear them and I like to give them. Sermons that say things like, Okay, Christians, get out of your comfort zone, have faith in Jesus, walk on water, and do amazing things. Today's gospel could take us there, and I'm tempted. I'm really tempted. But among biblical interpreters, there is debate over the meaning of this story where Jesus walks on water and Peter gives it a try. Jesus chides Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And we usually assume the lack of faith Jesus is talking about is when Peter, walking on the water, got afraid and began to sink. When we read the story this way, the point is, with more trust in Jesus, Peter would have been able to walk on the water and with more trust in Jesus, we could do dazzling things too. But there's another way to read this story. And that is seeing Peter's lack of faith earlier in the story. When still in the boat, after Jesus had revealed himself, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said, if it is you, command me to walk on the water. Jesus revealed himself with his signature lines, take heart, don't be afraid. And he revealed himself in language that sounds a lot like the way God revealed God's self to Moses in the burning bush. I am, it is I. So the revelation was there, but Peter said, if it's you, make me do dazzling things. If it's you, dazzle me. So the doubt, the lack of faith, was in Peter who didn't trust that it was Jesus coming towards him. In this way of understanding the story, it's a bit of a lesson to the early church. Kind of a don't try this at home, folks, 
stepping out of the boat to try to dazzle. Stay in the boat. Stay with your fellow disciples, with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Stay in the boat. Notice that once Jesus got back into the boat with Peter, that's when the wind stopped. There was calm, and those in the boat worshipped Jesus together, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. That is the first time in the whole Gospel of Matthew that human beings recognize that Jesus is the Son of God. The profession of faith came from the community. It came from the disciples gathered together in the boat. Peter on his own was saying, if it is you. But together, the disciples recognized and worshipped Jesus. So this story is drawing our attention to the unnamed group of disciples in the boat more than it is to Peter's, we could say, reckless demand for proof that it's Jesus. That drama swirling around Peter keeps us from going where this text wants to take us, which is to that stillness, that safety, that security in the boat with the community of faith. Together in the boat, the winds stopped. Together in the boat, the disciples find the words of faith and worship Jesus. Together in the boat, they can get to their next mission stop. Jesus brings Peter, scared and wet, back into the boat, saying, as if he says, Let me do the walking on water. You stay in the boat. It's like the good shepherd finding the lost sheep and bringing him back into the sheepfold. This gospel tells us it's good to be in the boat. It's good to be together in the community of faith. This is where Jesus will go to great lengths and has gone to great lengths to meet us when we're here together. Today, we are giving thanks for the baptism of Celia Joy Moraga. And on this day, it's good to remember that one of the earliest images of the church was a boat. The church is like a boat. Think rowboat or sailboat, not cruise ship or battleship, a small wooden boat. Jesus is the pilot safely carrying its members across the stormy seas of life. And we're very glad to welcome Celia Joy into this boat, into our community of faith, into the Church of Christ. It is only under extreme circumstances that we baptize anyone outside of a Sunday worship assembly. Baptism is once for all. So today we are recognizing, not re-baptizing, we are recognizing Celia Joy's baptism that took place in the hospital before her open heart surgery. Her mom and grandmother were there Henry was on FaceTime witnessing what we were doing. I baptized Celia. I marked her with the cross of Christ, and I gave her her baptismal garment, the white cloth with an embroidered gold cross that we give to everyone who's baptized at Mount Cross. And do you see the cover of your bulletin? The picture on the right It is a picture of that baptismal cloth, that baptismal garment attached to baby Celia's hospital bed. It went everywhere with her. It went with her into surgery. It was with her in recovery. It was with her throughout her weeks of 
hospitalization. As she grows up, people of God, we have a story to tell her about what it means to be in the boat together, don't we? We have the story to tell her, Celia, we prayed for you before you were born. Celia, we held you and your parents and your brother Logan and your sister Twyla in prayer through the fear and the uncertainty. When you came back to church that first Sunday after being in the hospital for so long, we erupted in joy to see you with your full head of hair and your precious smile. And we're rooting for you to keep gaining weight. And her parents have a story to tell baby Celia about what it means to be in the boat with a community of disciples. They have testimony to give that it's good to stay together, that it's good to show up to each other, that it's good to pray for one another to know each other and to love each other enough to be able to offer practical help, to offer meals, to offer rides, to offer childcare. Celia Joy is a living illustration of today's gospel. It is good to be together in the boat. It is good to be together worshiping Jesus. Jesus who says to each of us, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May Celia and all of us trust those words and the one who spoke them with our whole heart. Thanks be to God. Amen.